Come on. Now, now it should be live. Now it should be good, right? We had a last minute fix we had to change. Sometimes we broadcast 30 FPS, sometimes we broadcast 60 FPS, and I actually had the server set to 60, and then YouTube was expecting 30, and so when we started pushing it first, YouTube was like, what's going on? But uh, I think we've got that resolved now. Now let me know if you can hear and see me. It looks like Twitch was able to just, it didn't care, it would transcode it one way or the other, uh, but YouTube was choking because it was not getting the frame rate that it expected. But I'm here to do another NASA Space Flight Live. I've got some some folks with me as well as some folks with me let's pop over to our intro now that you know what's going on we've got uh, what we're talking about today but let's see let's see if we have our other subject matter experts today pop over this way thomas are you with me hey das how you doing all right a bit of a bumpy start there because <laughs> of that uh that hiccup maybe we should just start broadcasting nasa space flight live at 60 fps we, we need some built-in hold points to, leading up to nsf <laughs> live that's all we need I need a checklist or something where I can check things <laughs> off my list as we go. Um, but Thomas Burghardt here is one of the writer, web stream host, all sorts of different things. The camera operator now did the first uh, webcast from the Cape there for Starlink 12. What are we calling that Starlink, Thomas? Starlink V1L12 or the 13th Starlink or whatever the last Starlink was. You know, we call it a bunch of different things. <laughs> we call it a bunch of different things. Nice. And uh, then Moldy Space Industry starting off the stream with the Thomas fan club over there. So uh, Thomas Burghardt will be talking with me on NSF Live today. And then also we have another very special guest, the NASA Spaceflight Fleet Cam. <laughs> <laughs> We only had two people, so we figured that uh, we would ask Fleet Cam if it would like to join us. And so we have some fantastic views of a crane connected to a Falcon 9 booster. That is actually live from Port Canaveral right now. <laughs> so we'll be talking about that in just a little bit as we go. As we always do, we know that uh, these are live streams. So if you have a question for us, tag us in chat. If you're on Twitch, just say like, be like stop whatever uh, but if you're on youtube tag us at nasa spaceflight we have some fancy software over here that michael baylor wrote i think michael's here in the background as well michael i don't have you set to broadcast your audio are you expecting to broadcast audio or no whatever i want let, let me click, click this, this button, button. Nope, because then I'm going to come through twice. So we'd have to set up a bunch of other stuff. We'll get that going. I'll, I'll set that up whenever Thomas is talking here for a bit. But we have a lot of different things to talk about today. Let's get going, I guess. Thomas, what are we talking about? Should I, should I address the most recent breaking news so you can get Michael set up anyway? Yes, you should do that, actually. All right. So literally, as we were going live, and I'm going to put a graphic in the links document that you can pull up, Doss. Um, but uh, we have a press release from NASA, which has said that the SpaceX Crew-1 mission was literally just delayed, like, right now, like five minutes ago. Um, so the first operational flight of Crew Dragon, the Crew-1 mission, is now expected to launch no earlier than early to mid-November, is the direct quote. I am reading the press release for the first time right now, so I'm going to see what the actual cause is. Uh, the press release says is providing additional time for SpaceX to complete hardware testing and data reviews as the company evaluates off-nominal behavior of Falcon 9 first-stage engine gas generators. Okay, so this is related to the GPS-3 mission. Um, okay. If you remember, there was some gas generator issues on the first stage engines, um, which led to a very last second abort during that launch attempt. And that launch has not made another attempt since because they're still addressing that. I um, mean, it looks like they want to make sure that um, whatever that issue is, isn't also present on the Falcon 9 rocket for crew one so this is probably an abundance of caution thing that you don't want to you want to make sure that the problem is specific to the gps booster and not a systematic problem across the entire falcon 9 fleet um so there it looks like they're just looking at that and they want some extra time to make sure they get that right um it's interesting because crew one is not until the end of october so that's a pretty long time to have to address that issue but obviously crew one has lots of other preparations needed um not least of which with the dragon capsule as well as the falcon 9 launcher so maybe they just don't have time to squeeze in even more um prep work as far as that goes um i'm just going to make sure there's no other important details in this press release they say the sentinel 6 mission is still targeted for november 10th so that is not affected um the crs 21 mission is still targeted for late november or early december so i think that might be a new target time although we don't really have a firm date for that anyway um that would be the first flight of cargo dragon 2 um, so it looks like that's not 
directly affected by this yet. Um, see any other details the rest of this is just kind of like a status update on all the other iss missions yeah so and yeah the, I think... in the more link there so i did i brought up the tweet uh thomas from yeah and... looters so that is yeah basically it's just uh they're gonna delay crew one a bit to make sure that that issue on the gps falcon 9 uh is not also present on the crew one falcon 9 so and so that was i mean gps falcon 9 are we talking about the launch that didn't launch or yes. what are we we're talking about the launch that didn't launch yes yeah. so there were two falcon 9s in recent the last week or so that tried the launch only one of them have actually launched since, since then um the one that didn't is the gps the most recent gps satellite for the u.s space force um that is using a brand new falcon 9 rocket and uh during the final seconds of its first launch attempt they had an abort due to a gas generator issue on the merlin engines on the first stage we don't know exactly how many engines were involved i think it's sat does sound like the, the, the press release say multiple engines um so I might have, uh, yeah, I haven't let's read see, it yet. Hold on. Uh, first stage engine gas generators. Oh, it's a multiple gen. Well, each engine only has one gas generator, I'm pretty right. sure. So that sounds like there was actually multiple um, components that were having issues. Um, so they're going to, yeah, but basically they're looking at the, the Falcon 9 that has not launched yet. Um, there was a Starlink mission just earlier this week that used a flight proven Falcon 9 that, is, that had been to space twice prior. Uh, before that mission um, and that successfully launched and landed and came back to port as we saw with fleet cam um, so that mission went off fine uh, but there's an issue on the other falcon 9 mission um, which still sh that gps launch should be the next uh, falcon 9 launch um, but they have to address that gas generator issue and it sounds like it's now affecting crew one did someone say fleet cam did someone <laughs> say fleet cam <laughs> did someone say fleet cam wait fleet cam let me actually i think we could turn that off since that's just another copy of fleet cam in the upper corner when we've got fleet cam on fleet the camception but but that was supposed to launch from which pad? Hang on a second. That was launching from uh, forty. You know it's going to be yes, blocked the... by the ship. Oh, it's you're going to try and be blocked yeah. by the ship. GPS should have launched from pad forty. Oh it did no! Not. <laughs> and the ship is in the way, unfortunately. We the do have a ship. view of pad forty from fleet cam. But <laughs> not right can... now. Do we have that clip from the abort? Can we show that really quick, or do we not? Oh have yeah, it? absolutely. So folks, what I'm what I'm playing with here the the fleet camera. That's actually a robotic camera that we've deployed at. Port Canaveral. I'm logged into it from here at the studio, and uh, it's a PTZ camera. I'm, I'm actually zooming it and planning it and, and that sort of stuff, and we can see Pad 40 from it. We can see a lot of things from it, but right now we can't see Pad 40 because of this ship. Hang on, what is what ship is this? Wait a second. Who is blocking our view really quickly? Let's see. <laughs> Shame them. Wait, what is this? Sa Let's zoom in a little bit more here, and that's the Saga Fuji out of Hong Kong. So Saga Fuji, 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 Fuji? Whoa, whoa, why am I psyching myself out on how to say that? <laughs> um, that ship needs to get out of the way because it's blocking <laughs> our view of them folding up the legs and it's blocking our view of Pad 40 from the fleet camp. So anyways, Thomas, didn't mean to interrupt. Just wanted to go and check nope, out. No, you're right, good. Yeah, but if you haven't <laughs> seen this, uh, we were live, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Was it yesterday? I, or two days ago. Two days ago. I'm I losing think, track yeah. of time. I have no idea. The one of the last couple of days, we did a <laughs> live stream the return to port of Booster 1058, which you can see just behind the ship there. It's true. Um, it's true. Well, uh, coming back after its most recent Starlink mission, and uh, we did unveil Fleet Cam, which is our new robotically operated camera in Port Canaveral. We can show you fleet activities. We have a view of several of the pads. We can definitely see. Uh, launches from any pad once they lift off um, we can see spacex fleet activities when blue origin starts bringing their recovery ship in we'll see that we yep. can see the dragon recovery vessels we can see the fairing recovery vessels we can see ula's uh, rocket ship coming to deliver rocket components and things like that we see part um, of pad 37 as well over there yes we can see a whole bunch of stuff so um, <laughs> we're going to show that as much as we can because it's super cool but yeah it's true. I'm going to try to get that picture from uh, from the scrub for GPS that we were yeah, talking about. Yeah, we want about. to show you what the view from Pad 40 is, because I think that's the the pad we have the best view of from yeah, this cam. It is. Um, so a complete so unobstructed view to, to Pad yeah. 40. There's a, and everything else is kind of like behind a, a tree line or some buildings or something. But like once something lifts off from any other pad, you'd see the rocket. So um, we'll also be able to use it for pretty much any launch. Yep. Um, we, we did test it during the Starlink stream. We know we had someone in the studio working on to see how well we can track a rocket with fleet cam. So we got that in work. 
Um, we'll definitely use it for like static fire coverage 100%, especially yep. at pad 40, so we can track that, um, things like that. So there's a lot of things we can do, not just obviously the main purpose, which is watching all the recovery there vessels. Go. There you go. Yeah, that there is, we go. Fr- that is a r- video that we recorded from Fleet Cam yep. um, during the GPS launch scrub. Um, and that's Falcon 9 venting oh. unhappily. <laughs> and then it went over to this thing. I, I got to come up with a better way to do that. Let me go back to that video. So that is that is the scr- – that's actually the T-minus 20-minute vent on that one mm. for this. And this was the view okay. from Fleet Cam. We also had a track of the Starlink launch as well. Uh, Starlink that was coming off of Pad 39A. We don't have a line of sight to Pad 39A from right. here. But I do have a little bit of a uh, time lapse from that. This is sort of – the end of the launch you can actually see up at the top that's the rocket and that's the view from fleet cam then it's a time lapse of a rainstorm coming in afterwards so anyways we have all sorts of, i'm gonna keep bringing the fleet cam thing up over and over <laughs> i'm not even gonna apologize about it. like look at the rainstorm like wait, isn't this cool like the rainstorm this, this is also a great through. way for us to check if the weather at cape canaveral is conducive to a rocket launch so we can just oh. pull up fleet cam and be like is yeah, it gonna scrub to again green again yeah hang on i'll get this all cleaned up there there that's a little bit better so you can yeah. see but we, that's let's... the time lapse of the fairings being offloaded from the starlink mission that Dos put together yep let's uh let's continue talking about the other things and i'll bring up the relevant things from fleet cam which i could sit here for an hour and a half and just play with fleet cam like i could <laughs> Compl- don't blame you at all i mean so julie and i went down to see the booster return um and we had our regular live stream camera and then when they passed us das was like oh wait we have this new thing and brought yep, up fleet yep. cam and it was awesome um and <laughs> And then we just sat in port all night because fleet cam is awesome, and we just went and 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 SpaceX ships kept like moving around. They moved one of the Dragon ships to the other side. They were docking, of course, just read the or um, of course, I still love you. Yep. With the booster, the fairing catcher went out and did some sea trials, so we saw that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff to see, and fleet cam gave us a great view of everything. So we were like, um, we're, so we basically just spent the entire night looking at port, and it was awesome. It's true. And then when we went to sleep, fleet cam continued watching what was going on, so that it's... we get time lapses like this. Thing. So this is actually the offload. Look at him moving the tarps. See, this is the offload of the two fairings. One of the fairings was caught and one of the fairings was fished, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. So anyways, I can continue playing with this. But Thomas, <laughs> you better be in control of this. You better say what we're going to be talking about, because <laughs> otherwise it's just going to be, oh, this thing happened with Fleet Cam, and then let's go back to Fleet Cam. <laughs> well, there's no boat? short... We got lots of stuff to talk about that we can use Fleet Cam for. Uh, real quick, I'll run through a couple Super Chats we got. Uh, first thing, uh, Multi Space Industries, Thomas Fan Club, what's up, MSI? Another regular on the streams. Uh, Paul Harris with the new membership. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, James with the $5, loving all the content keep it coming you got it james you know it's, we're gonna keep it coming uh and then canp railroad another uh regular here uh here to everyone having an awesome day today uh, appreciate all the super chats and memberships that is the stuff that enables things like fleet cam, fleet cam. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much fleet cam is direct i'm telling you direct you know result of all the super chats and memberships and stuff we get um so thank you guys so much for the support and we've got even more projects coming and i'll be so i know what some of the other projects are can't reveal them yet but in my opinion <laughs> like the other ones are even cooler than fleet cam so like just stay <laughs> tuned because they're super awesome um but yeah it's thank true. you so much for the support everybody um, so yeah, what what can we talk? So yeah, we had the Starlink launch. Um, I guess that we should r- wrap up the the news from this past week first. Um, yeah, sure. We did finally have a lift off from Cape Canaveral. We had so many different scopes. There were three missions trying to launch from Cape Canaveral. This Starlink mission, the GPS mission, which we said already scrubbed and they're currently working on. <laughs> Doss is going to keep bringing up Fleet Cam whenever he has a reason to. I didn't say anything. I just went to the scene and Fleet Cam was his, our special guest today was Fleet Cam. So. <laughs> anyway. uh, and we also had the Delta IV Heavy Enroll mission, which I still not launched because they had technical issues. Yep. Um, but finally, the one Starlink mission did finally launch the version 1 L12 mission or the 13th overall Starlink mission depending on which naming scheme you're using these days. Yep. Um, uh, finally lifted off from Pad 39A. This was our view from the press site. Um, don't mock my rocket tracking too much, chat. Um, this was your first track. Like This, is this the first was, one yeah. You tracked. You tracked a couple scrubs pretty well. I did, I, <laughs> which is a lot easier because nothing moves. But uh, uh, yeah, we, yes. had a, we had a beautiful liftoff from 39A. The weather was great. Uh, we had a beautiful sunrise right beforehand and then uh, early morning liftoff. 
um, completely successful launch. Falcon 9 both launched and landed successfully on Of Course I Still Love You. Um, the second stage powered on, brought the 60 Starlink satellites to orbit successfully. The fairings were both recovered, one caught, one uh, fished out after a soft splashdown. Um, and uh, yeah, all 60 satellites deployed successfully and another batch of Starlink satellites moving to their orbits. Um, Elon actually said after this launch that once these sets, this set of satellites um, reaches their operational positions in the constellation, um, that they will have the coverage they need for the first public uh, beta um, for Starlink access. So they're getting really close to starting to uh, have enough satellites on orbit uh, to offer access. So this is a big milestone launch as far as that's concerned. Yeah, nice. Um, and y'all give it up for Thomas here. Thomas's <laughs> first trek, we're running the NASA Spaceflight remote camera. It's like a mobile camera. Now that we have fleet, fleet cam, we have to come up with a name. I, I call this remote O2. Remote O1 is at Boca Chica. Remote O2 is at at the Cape Canaveral, like Cape Canaveral, and they can move Remoto 2 around to do launch coverage. Remoto 2 and... is actually right in front of my desk right now. <laughs> it is. It's right, right there. Thomas has Remoto 2 right now. So we gotta, I got to come up with more names, but uh, this is our broadcast kit that's stationed down at Cape Canaveral so that the crew can move around and cover different things. But Thomas, good job on your first track there with the, the Starlink launch. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and to be fair, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to because the first time I have to track one that's got like solids on it, I know that's a whole other challenge because Falcon 9, which isn't a super slow rocket, but yep. it doesn't have the kick that a solid rocket booster has. So when we get like, I don't, we, there's an Atlas coming up with some solids, that might be a challenge. We'll have to see. But um, it was a gorgeous liftoff. Um, the sound was great. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just a, a beautiful launch. And we were just thankful that something finally lifted off, to be honest, after so many scrubs. And it was interesting because just a few minutes before that launch, weather went red. And we went, well, here we go. Here comes another yep. scrub. But it cleared up just in time, and they did launch successfully. And I got to say, at some point, we're going to grade all these colors the same, right? I can't do anything about SpaceX's feed. But look at all the different colors that go through on the SpaceX feed. And I'll tell you one thing that sort of gets on my nerves like if you come back to this view right here, this is me talking tech stuff. The sky is not that color, folks. That yeah. blue, way oversaturated color that you get on the SpaceX feed sometimes, that's not what it looks like in real life. <laughs> it's a little bit closer to our camera. That's what the sky sort of looks like in real life. Ours is a little bit too gray. Theirs is like way too blue. And then you get a scene like this, and you're like, is this the same sky? Is this the same rocket <laughs> yeah. launch? So maybe at some point Thomas will work and we'll get a little bit more blue in our shot. And I can't do anything about that SpaceX. That's like oversaturated like crazy. So, <laughs> But anyways. it looks nice and pretty, so they'll probably keep it that way. And it, it looks good. It does look nice. Maybe we'll get ours, like, we'll, we'll push ours past a little bit past reality and get a little bit closer to matching that. Because it does, it gives great contrast. The colors on the Falcon 9, the black interstate yeah. and stuff like that. Anyways. Camera, uh, camera, cameras. How do they work? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, this was also there was a reuse milestone on that mission. One of the fairings have one of the, one of the fairing halves flying its third mission, and that was actually the fairing half that got caught. Um, so one fairing half has now flown three different missions. Um, the other one was on its first mission. Um, so that was a radius milestone there. The first stage was on its third flight, um, previously supported Demo-2, the first crewed flight for SpaceX, and the Anasis-2 launch. Um, there is our fleet cam shot of the launch. I was just, um, I mean, it was relevant. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, reused first stage this, with yeah. a third mission. That booster will, of course, uh, now is in, fleet, is in the Port Canaveral getting processed for its fourth launch. Uh, we don't know what mission it'll fly next. Um, probably another Starlink mission, um, just because it's on its fourth flight now. And you know, they did fly the Southcom 1B and the in-flight abort missions were both on the fourth flight. So they could fly on a commercial mission, should it be needed. Um, but it won't be ready for about another month and a half to two months um, because they got to process it for the next mission. Um, but uh, yeah, so Booster will fly again. Uh, but overall, a very successful launch. And the next one for SpaceX will hopefully be the GPS-3 mission once uh, they get that technical issue resolved. And this is what I was setting up the rain coming through is what I was trying to set up. This is at Port Canaveral. Oh, mm. my gosh. I got to stop that. It just keeps going <laughs> to the other thing. Um, that's at Port Canaveral. And just we talk about scrubs. We talk about, oh, well, it launched right in this little window. Maybe the window will be clear. The way that it works over at Cape Canaveral, it'll be no go, no go. Weather not going to happen. And then all of a sudden it clears up. Oh, shoot the gap. And then all of a sudden rain comes through again. So a lot, sometimes these launches with the frequent rainstorms that come through are really shooting the gap. You know, they're right there and mm -hmm. they just, they hit the hole. But I thought I, again, hopping over, that was uh, just after the launch. You saw that rain was coming right in to the port area right after the launch. So go ahead, Thomas. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we do have a question. Has there been any news on plans to reuse those fairings from the latest Starlink? Um, SpaceX doesn't really like discuss their reuse plans for every mission, but considering they successfully recovered them, 
very good chance that they will fly again. Uh, we don't know when, on what mission, um, but uh, they will most likely fly again because they were successfully recovered. So SpaceX hasn't said anything, but yes, they should be re uh, reflown at some point. Yeah, um, gotcha. Which will mean we have a fairing half flying a fourth mission, which will be a new milestone. So very exciting. Oh, did someone say fairing halves? Hang on a second. So <laughs> <laughs> wait. Fairing halves, you say? Oh, that's good. That's Fleet Cam actually presenting its own photograph here. Those are some of the uh, fairing cradles over at the port, and this was taken from Fleet Cam that night. I had never actually really paid attention to those before. And that is the, they bring those over on the trucks, and then they put them sideways, and they actually put the fairings on them and carry them back over for processing again. So, anyways. Yep. Uh, you know, just, um, and then we did mention that GPS-3 will launch from pad 40, to answer that question, Richard. Um, that will launch from Space Launch, Com Space Launch Complex 40, um, and that is most likely because the Crew-1 mission needs pad 39a because that's where the crew access uh, arm is and all of that and uh because that's such a high priority mission uh we expect that spacex won't try to squeeze in another launch from pad 39a before crew one they want to leave the pad uh ready to be prepared for crew one um after the starlink mission so um all of the missions in the near term that aren't crew one will probably go from pad 40 um except for sentinel six which is launching from vandenberg in california different right. mission. which is um, nice when is sentinel six coming up sometime in november or do we know november yet? 10th is the current launch date um and that was still in that release when the crew one got delayed um gotcha. so still targeting november 10th for that um and that'll right. be a cool mission that'll have a return to launch site landing at landing zone four um and will be the first launch from vandy in a while um so looking forward to another vandenberg launch I know a lot uh, of the photographers out there are jonesing for another launch, right? Like absolutely. they haven't gotten action in Vandy in a long time. So you bet it. Yeah. First, when we say Vandy, we're talking about Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is a launch facility on the West Coast over in California. It's like, what, what is it? It's like an hour, hour and a half north of LA, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, between mean, where Los does LA Angeles start? and San Francisco. Yeah, it, yeah, but it's north of Los Angeles. Yeah. And uh, that is, they have a couple of pads over there. United Launch Alliance can launch from there. They've got the Delta IV pad there. Um, and then SpaceX has a pad there. And then SpaceX has, I think, done two RTLSs there as well. They've done a couple ship recoveries there where they land on the ASDS, but they've done, I think, one or two RTLSs at Vandenberg, right? I'm going to pull up my handy dandy uh -huh. spreadsheet with all of this information on it, and I'll tell you the exact number. Hold on. I was there for one of them. I know I was there for one of them. <laughs> There, there were Southcom multiple. Southcom and radar sat. Southcom South and radar sat. Southcom one A and radar sat um, gotcha. are the two LZ four landings. Let's see. Uh, yep, two and they're two for two on LZ four landings. So the next one will be the Southcom one, or sorry, Southcom one B launched from Florida Polar Launch Corridor. Jack will get mad at us for saying it on stream, but that's what happened. <laughs> uh, the the Sentinel six mission will be the 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 third RTLS attempt. Gotcha. And real quick. Uh, did we run some super chats there? I thought I saw some super chats come through. I ran I through some them. super chats. I think I'm caught up on super chats. All right, let me do this real quick. Over on the Twitch side, Banana Dodo, seventy months watch subbed, not just watching subbed to my stream for seventy months, and at tier three no less. So that's like on Twitch, that's the highest tier you can. Banana, I appreciate you. I know that was a couple minutes because I was talking about fleet cam and launches and stuff like that. But thank you so much for uh, the seventy months. Like literally one of the longest term members over on my stream. I really appreciate the support. Actually, even sent me some Kerbal uh, Lego figures at one point that I have on my desk. So <laughs> nice. you can see these. Will my camera get them? Oh, no, the Kerbal's going to green screen out. Now that's just crazy Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> that's not what you want. But some, some custom painted Kerbal Lego figures that have little... Uh, my logos on them and stuff like that. So, Banana, I appreciate all the support. Long time. I know I haven't been playing as much KSP lately, but I really do appreciate everything you've done over on my channel. So, thank you so much. You're you're one of the reasons that I got here. The reason that NASA Spaceflight can do all this is because people like Banana Dodo over on Twitch sent me through Streamer University Crash Course, whatever you want to call it, for five years, and I got I learned the skills to do things like these live streams, installing Fleet Cam, the the virtual field trips, all that stuff is because of people like that. So, Banana. Thank you for making all this possible. What else do we have on the list, Thomas? Um, uh, well, I do want to uh, address a question. The other reason I brought up my spreadsheet is because someone asked how many operational boosters does SpaceX have right now? Right. Um, and so I'm going to bring up my list. And by my counting, we have 
booster 1049, which is was the first booster to fly its six mission. Um, most recently flew a Starlink mission. Uh, as far as we know, that one is still active. Uh, that will probably be the first booster to fly a seventh mission, likely a Starlink mission. Yep. Um, we have booster 1051, which was the demo one booster, also launched radar set and then a few Starlinks. Um, that one is preparing for its sixth flight. Um, we have the two side boosters from the two Block 5 Falcon Heavy launches, which are technically active because we haven't SpaceX, you know, we haven't see, heard or seen anything to suggest they'll never fly again. Um, but they haven't flown since uh, the STP-2 mission, but they're technically in the active fleet. Um, we have Booster 1058, which is the one you're looking at via fleet cam right now. Um, <laughs> Just finished its third flight. Uh, we have Booster 1059, which recently launched Salcom 1B on its fourth mission. That one's preparing for another flight. And we have Booster 1060, uh, which recently launched the 12th Starlink mission um, and is preparing for its third flight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, active boosters that have flown already. Then we have a couple new boosters that we know for sure. We've got Crew 1 booster, Booster 1061. The booster for the next GPS mission, which just scrubbed, um, but is still active, Booster 1062. We have the Booster 1063, which is currently at Vandenberg, getting ready for Sentinel-6A. And we've just seen the first side booster for the next Falcon Heavy mission, USF-44, which we believe is Booster 1064. So in total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 active boosters in the in the SpaceX fleet, three of which are Falcon Heavy side boosters, the retro Falcon 9s. Um, gotcha. And based on, since we just saw a side booster go through McGregor, we are expecting another side booster and a center core to be the next two to come through in some order um, for that USS F-44 Falcon Heavy mission launching next year. Um, but that is the list of active Fal uh, Falcon boosters. Um, and they're... Did anybody count that while he was saying it? Did anybody count that? <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven so far. The one at McGregor okay. right now is the 11th as far as active gotcha. boosters go. Um, all the other ones have either been expended uh, intentionally or had like a landing failure or something to destroy them or something um, as far as block five boosters go. Gotcha. I sorry, a, a question over there real quickly. Uh, what exactly is fleet cam? <laughs> uh, well, Daz, go ahead. <laughs> Funny you should ask. Uh, we worked with a local restaurant there at Port Canaveral, Rusty Seafood, and they gave us permission to install a permanent camera there at their restaurant location. So we can log in. It's a robotic camera. It's what's called a PTZ, a pan tilt zoom camera. And normally these sorts of things are security cameras, but we've got this one configured as a broadcast feed. So anytime we have something to show, we can actually pull this broadcast feed off the, it's an unattended camera. It's a remote control robotic camera. And we can pull that broadcast feed into the studio here, into our live stream cloud servers, basically. And we can show you live what's happening at the port. So we call it fleet cam because we use it to watch what's going on with uh, Port Canaveral, all the fairing recovery ships and that sort of stuff. Like right now, those are the grid fins up on top of the booster and the cap. That's 1058 that launched the Starlink mission. But if we wanted, we could actually zoom out and we could look around. Y'all think the fairing catchers are over there? Should be. Oh, oh I, I can see there's another I cargo ship. I can see the ship. arm of one of them. <laughs> yeah. So back there, there's a cargo ship in the way again. But that is one of the arms of one of the fairing catchers right there in the middle that is an arm of fairing catcher. So we can sort of look around. Of course, it's a port. There are other things that go on, but we can see the, let's see if the dragon recovery vessel is still there. Oh, right there. So yep, there both of the, what are the uh, searcher and navigator, right? Yes. And I believe searcher is the one closest to us because it has the mock-up with the nose cone on it. And then yep. navigator is the one behind it because um, it's mock-up didn't have a nose cone. Navigator is the one that recovered demo two, Bob and Doug. Uh, and then the one closest to us is searcher, the other one. Yep. So what you see there in the middle of the screen, and this is me, I'm controlling the camera from here at the studio. I literally have an interface and I can point it in different directions and zoom in and zoom out and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but that's one of the training articles. What's the right term for that, Thomas? Is training article? Yeah, training article, test article. Um, test they're article? basically used to help the recovery teams and even the astronauts are involved uh, re practice recovery operations. They'll like go just offshore or sometimes they don't even leave port. Sometimes they just go yep. to one of the basins in port yep. and they'll dunk the uh, test article in the water and then practice recovering it, getting it back on board. So yep. So right now, the, the two Dragon recovery ships, like when Bob and Doug launched, one of the ships that actually recovered them from the Gulf of Mexico. It, no, Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, they were Gulf of Mexico. Yep, they Gulf of Mexico, yep. 
Yeah, they did. Um, one of the ships that actually recovered them is here right next to our camera, and we can look around and see what's going on. But that dragon capsule you see, that's a training thing that, like Thomas was saying, they use to actually practice the crew recoveries. So both of those ships are there right now. These are both the Go ships, and I think... Yeah, you can actually see the pergolas see in the, the way. Yeah, but you can see the other test article, and you can see that that one actually has a nose cone on top. It's slightly different. Yeah. Um, a more high-fidelity testing article, but yeah. yeah. Can't quite get to... You can see that in there, but uh, anyways, that's what the fleet came in. Is it, a perm it is a permanently installed camera, but it is not something that we are currently doing 24-7. Let's get it back over towards the booster. Yeah, we there had some we questions go. about that. Are, are there any plans to make this a 24-7 deal? So we're still working on it. Uh, the 24-7, it's it's not that just that we want views of port all the time. Like We want something that's interesting to show. And then there's not always something going on in port, right? We don't just want to have the camera on one of the ships that's parked constantly. So we're still sort of thinking about, are we going to make it 24-7? Probably what we're going to do is start it off as a channel memberships. So we'll do like a maybe a 24-7 feed for channel members, just like a behind the scenes sort of thing. And we'll see how that goes. Is it stable? Do we have trouble with chat? Like, is somebody going to sit there and watch it 24-7? Because we want to make sure the number one thing that we want to use this camera for is a broadcast camera that we can pull in when there's something we want to cover. Normally, we have to deploy a camera crew, right? So Thomas will pack up Remoto 2, or Chris will pack up Remoto 2, and they'll carry everything out there, set it up on the tripod, get all the modems online, yada, 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 and then they point the camera around. And sometimes there's things that are happening that maybe Thomas doesn't need to drive an hour with the kit, but we still want to show. So for this, we can actually bring up that feed and show you what's happening at the port with our live commentary, even though we don't deploy a camera crew there, right? We want more things like Absolutely. this where we can uh, <clears throat> have cameras. Let's just cut to the port and see what's happening. Yes. Um, like we, do, we actually have a couple of questions about fleet cam, and I know Doss sure. is going to turn down an opportunity to talk about fleet cam, so I'm just going to ask him. Um, let's. See. All right, we've got a question from a camera nerd. Uh, Reese wants to know, how are you guys getting signal to fleet cam? I'm kind of a camera nerd. Ah, so signal to fleet cam, we've actually got fixed wireless out there, which is, uh, it's like an internet connection, but there's a point-to-point -point antenna that's installed, and it goes back to a main tower with a local internet provider, and we're connected over that. So we're not using modems or data plans for this, um, for something that potentially may one day actually be 24-7 a port or something like that. We were not going to use mobile data for that, right? And the other thing, this isn't hooked up to a solo, so one of our normal broadcast encoders that pipes multiple different internet connections, bonds multiple internet connections together. Uh, we're not using a solo, we're just using a single internet connection. So not quite a hard line. It's not like fiber or a cable modem or anything like that, but it's not 4G like cellular wireless. It's point to point wireless with an internet provider out there. So. Uh, we also had, is Fleet Cam on a tower at the restaurant at the Cape? How is the cam protected from Florida weather? Aha, how is the cam protected from Florida weather since we're talking about Fleet Cam? Uh, we know the person in charge of Fleet Cam. If we look up, you can actually <laughs> see the awning there. It's under a roof. See? Yeah. You can see that it's back under the awning of the restaurant. And it's sort of protected from rain. Sometimes it's going to be uh, raining so hard that it will get wet. Julia is there. She she lives over at the port. So she's I briefed her on how to go and clean it on occasion. And if we get stuff on the lens or something, she can go clean it. But it, it, right now it's underneath a uh, it's underneath the eave of the building, basically. So that sort of protects it from the elements a little bit. But we are going to have to maintain it in some way, shape, or form. We're just gaining experience with it to see exactly what that's going to mean. I just I have yeah. too much fun pointing this thing around. I'm sorry, Thomas. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, I'm just going to have to ask you to give me to show me how to control it at some point because I, I want to mess with it too. Uh, I'm working but... on uh, setting it up so you can control it with an Xbox controller. Yeah, so you that can would sit... be so cool back at your home, like wherever you are and in the studio here in Charlotte or Michael Baylor's over in California or whatever. And I'm setting it up so you can sit back and you can play it like a video game. Yeah. And a big <laughs> thank you to uh, Rusty's restaurant down in Port Canaveral because that is where the camera is. If we did not mention that, um, they're, they were just as excited about this as we are. So big yeah. thank you to them for uh, helping us bring this to you guys because it's super cool. Yeah, um, absolutely. One more fleet cam question from Chad oh, here. Geez. Do you, do you, well, all right, don't act like you don't want me to ask you more fleet cam <laughs> questions. Does. Well, I'm just derailing it. Like I was going to be like, let's let Thomas talk about something that's not fleet cam related <laughs> for a second. What's the last? Well, I guess I'll ask After last this question. question, I'll talk about some other stuff. Do you have uh, presets for that camera so you can just press a button and get the view you want? I do. Like, if we wanted to see, uh, let's see here, this would be the North Dock, 
and I can click North Dock and it just zooms in over there. If the big cargo ship wasn't there, those are the ferry yeah. catchers and sometimes a uh, searcher and navigator up there as well. And if we wanted to, we could go over and look at, uh, let's see here, the sunset is one of the presets. So it'll go and it'll actually catch a really nice view of the sunset over the port. Of course, that's looking out to the west. Uh, I have like 20 or 30 different presets here. Let's see. I don't. We think have a bunch moves. of launch pad ones. We showed you what 40 yep. would have looked like without a ship in the way. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I need to reset the crane booth here. I didn't uh, finalize the crane booth, but we can go and look at the crane booth. And we can see, oh, is are they lifting it? Is the crane operator in the booth? We can do that. We can go and look. And then, of course, like the there's one for the launch stand. The cargo ship's going to be blocking that right now. We do have this one, Thomas. I bet you this one's not blocked. Let's see if anybody can name this launch pad. Let's see here. A little bit of drift. Oh, they oh, moved those know. cranes over. Oh, the pilot dirt's taller. Oh, than the oh I, okay. I think I know oh. what that is. You can see one lightning tower of it, right? <laughs> yeah, there's one lightning tower there. Uh, that's actually the pad they're building, the yes. new Glen pad. 30, 36, isn't it? Uh, yes, 36. Yeah. Wait. Oh, hold on. New I've got it. I've got it saved as 36. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's 36. <laughs> it is. Yes, it's 36. Okay, I was second guessing myself, but you're right. Gotcha. And I think, hang on, I think I had VC in there as well. Let's see if we have a view over to the visitor center. No, the cargo ship's in the way. Oh, yeah, so yeah again, we could see like the top of the shuttle tank and stuff, right? Yep. We could see that, yeah. But we do have a bunch so. of pre-suits, so we need to go back and, and dial them in and uh, make sure they're all good to go. But our, our number one thing is we wanted to use this to catch the booster returns. It, it's just mm -hmm. a bonus that we can see all this other stuff while we're looking around. But there is sort of back to the booster. And you can see those cargo cranes that are on the uh, Saga Fuji there, those cargo cranes on the big cargo ship move back and forth. Right now, the bottom of the crane is actually blocking the booster. But anyways, Thomas, there are other things that have been happening. Yes, let's talk about some other cam. things. <laughs> um, real quick, another new membership. Brett, thank you so much for the channel membership. And then Marcin, I hope I pronounced that Marcin correctly with the super chat. Uh, thank you so much for the support. PLN, what PLN. currency is PLN? I'm checking. I don't know, PLN. Uh oh, from Poland. Poland. Thank you. Some viewership from Poland. Thank you. Hope you're uh, enjoying. Thank you so I much for the support. No clue how to say that. Does yeah, I didn't know what the actual word was, Lottie? so I just said it from Poland. Poland versus like, what's the name of the Polish currency? <laughs> so appreciate this, but yeah, absolutely. Um, and we do have some questions because we talked about all the active boosters in the fleet, and they have SpaceX has a pretty busy, uh, busy manifest coming up, and we have. A couple questions in chat about this new Enroll 108 mission that just came out. Um, the sort of late notice, all of a sudden, this random national security mission shows up on the SpaceX manifest. Um, so Enroll 108 will launch on a Falcon 9 rocket. Um, I believe the no earlier than date we have is October 25th. Um, do, and that a, do you have a link for that one, Thomas? Uh, I don't think I have a link to show on that one. That's cool. I don't think so. I mean, you could point at Pad 40 if the ship wasn't in the way. It's but... raining. <laughs> look, it's raining. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> anyways, all right. So, anyways, um, so yeah, Enro 108 is this, like, uh, national security mission that just came up recently. Um, we don't have any really additional info about this mission. It is going to be a classified mission for the National Reconnaissance Office, so some sort of reconnaissance satellite um, launching on a Falcon 9. Um, probably from pad 40 just because of the timeline it'll be very close to preps for demo or for crew one um so they're not going to want to use their nna so almost certainly from uh pad 40 um and the first uh sort of word of this mission we got uh, was an FCC permit for a, an RTLS mission um, that didn't align with any of the known missions on the manifest. We knew CRS-21 right. was going to be a drone ship recovery. Um, we had a couple uh, like geostationary commsat missions coming up. Those all do drone ship recoveries. Um, Starlink missions are all drone ship recovery. So it was a very weird thing. GPS is a drone ship recovery. Um, so we had this one RTLS landing that we couldn't tie to a, a mission. Um, and it turns out that is, in fact, for this Enroll 108 mission. So it'll be exciting to see a return to launch site landing on that flight. Um, and also based on the active boosters that we showed up um, or that we that we mentioned earlier, all of the new boosters that have come through are already assigned to other missions, which suggests that this will be a national security mission launching on a flight proven booster. Um, couldn't tell you which one yet. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, it will be a NRO mission on a flown booster. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. 
Um, and yeah, like I said, mostly likely from Pad40, uh, looking at late October for a launch frame there. Um, and that's kind of all we know because it's this classified mission. Uh, but it's cool to see a, a, another sort of mysterious mission come up on the manifest. Those are always fun to cover, um, at least for me, at least. Yeah, gotcha. And I'm I'm working on uh, I'm working on some stuff in the background here, Thomas. So you keep on going, and we may have another special guest joining us whenever we start talking about Starship, which is coming up here in a minute, y'all. Another special guest? Well, I always like special guests. Yes, um, yes. Let's see. What else is going? Let me see if there's any other news from this uh, past week to recap. We're going to talk about Starship. We'll get that in a second. We I want will. to see if there's any other uh, stuff to bring up. Um, we did see the booster comeback. We already talked about uh, Fleet Cam and all of that. Wait, the booster um, comeback? No, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you gotta be careful what you say in front of DOS. It'll, it'll of trigger DOS, something right? and bring up another camera. Well, no, I've got uh, this picture that you took of the booster coming back because you you went out there. But yes, because because the... we we pulled a fast one. We just like oh, we'll just do our regular stream. We'll just bring yep. up the we'll bring up the, out the camera. Me and Julia were talking about stuff. Uh, that is one of my photos slightly zoomed in. But yes, yeah, I'm, I'm zooming uh, it out. There you go. There you go. There of, we go. Better uh, of it in front of the jetty at Jetty Park. Um, uh, it was a beautiful return. It was just before sunset. Uh, a lot of these returns happened in the morning, um, but because it was such a morning launch, they actually got back in time for it to be an evening arrival, uh, and it was beautiful out. It was an awesome awesome uh, way to see the booster come back. Yeah, it really um, was. So that happened. That booster is now getting processed as import. There's uh, a, that, I think that's one you took too, right, Thomas? Yeah, that's yes. you. Yeah, yep. that's a cool shot, dude. Yeah, I loved it. it. We got a treat because we got there and the we saw the booster out on the horizon, getting ready to come in, and the fairy catcher was out, literally like doing donuts, like it was doing just, donuts. It, like I, that's what it looked like. Obviously, they were actually like testing some things, I'm sure. Um, and they just so happened to finish that up uh, right before the booster came in, so we saw two SpaceX recovery ships uh, in action there. Um, so that was cool to see. Um, we also had a definite arrival at the International Space Station. The Cygnus NG-14 cargo spacecraft did arrive at the ISS uh, following its successful launch from Wallet's flight facility on an Antares rocket. Um, that is the latest cargo delivery to the ISS, full of food and supplies for the crew, uh, scientific uh, research to do and things like that. Um, and a lot of the stuff on board is actually uh, going to wait in the in that vehicle until the Crew-1 uh, crew arrives, um, as well as a Soyuz crew that's launching in the next couple of days, um, because there's a lot of uh, scientific research on board that needs more crew to be completed. Um, so once the crew gets there, they're going to unpack even more of that vehicle and do a lot of cool scientific research. Um, one object of interest on this flight, there was a new toilet for the ISS on board, which every catches everyone's attention whenever they talk about space toilets. So if you're into that, space toilet also delivered on the Cygnus spacecraft. Um, you can see here the Canada arm going out to grapple the spacecraft. Um, this is one of the vehicles that does not dock directly to the station. It is captured by the Canada arm, and then they install it on the ISS. We call it berthing. It's birthed, um, yeah, exactly. Yes, it is birthed to the ISS. And that's sort of um, what happens with the big ships that you can see on fleet cam as well. <laughs> yes, that is true. Oh, my goodness. This guy's going to bring up fleet cam every chance he gets. <laughs> Uh, but he, but he's not wrong. That's a good point. Um, it's, yeah. I actually have a video of that. I have a video of the big ship coming in. I haven't prepared it. I haven't prepared that video yet, though. Uh, but when the big cargo ships come into port, they'll get up close to the to the mouth of the port, and then the mm -hmm. tugboats will go out and they'll sort of escort them in, and the tugboats will actually put them up on the dock. The big cargo ships don't dock. The big cargo ships are berthed, and that's the same thing that happens with the Canada Arm. If a ship comes in and drives itself up to the dock or the docking port, that's docking. But if a ship gets close and then has something else help it get attached to the space station or up to the dock at the cargo piers, that is berthing. It's it's are you getting help to your final position or are you able to get to your final position on your own? And space station works the exact same way that the port does. Back to you, Thomas. Yes. Uh, so uh, and it's anyway, so Cygnus is one of the few vehicles that actually still does that. Um, the new Cargo Dragon Two will dock directly, just like Crew Dragon does. Um, so. Of the two cargo vehicles, Cygnus um, is the one that births. Once Dream Chaser comes online from Sierra Nevada, um, that one will also be birthed via Cannon Arms, so that'll be another birthing vehicle. Um, but all the crew vehicles, both Crew Dragon and Starliner, um, as well as the Soyuz and Progress vehicles from Russia, all of those um, dock um, to the station. Although the Japanese HTV-X cargo vehicle that will debut next year, I believe, um, also births. So there's a couple of vehicles that berth. Um, more of them are moving towards docking, though. Because um, you don't need a crew to operate yep. the can arm, it can just dock itself yep. autonomously, which is preferred. And the um, other thing I was going to say really quickly, let me see, am I still on? Nope, let me hop back over to this scene. The other thing that I was going to say is this shot here 
right? So as, as you went through the shot, you saw the camera sort of changing. Do you see this? And a lot of the cameras on the ISS are actually teleoperated. They're not operated mm -hmm. by astronauts there on station. They're operated by people down at Mission Control, just like Fleet Cam. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, anyways, I, somebody I to, changed the subject. I had to pass right. that in as well. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was a, another arrival at the ISS, uh, that, and that spacecraft will stay at the ISS for about a month, um, and then it'll be it'll depart the station once all of the resources on board are brought onto the ISS or used completely. Yep. Um, before we move on, do we have a special guest to introduce now? I think so. Let's see here, Chris Bergen. Are we getting you right now? Uh, I think so. Yeah. There we <laughs> yeah, go. <you're> right. <laughs> yeah, I hear him. Yeah, chat. Uh, let me see. Let me just make sure real quick. Chris, talk one more time. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Sounds good. So we don't have video from Chris B right now, but he was able to join us audio only. Uh, Michael, maybe we could put his information in the upper right hand corner, and that'll sort of fill in that other slot there. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. Can you hear me all right now? Because I just checked something on the um, on the settings, just making sure one like, final time. Yes, chat. Excellent, can and hear... it's all good on my end as well. Yeah, yeah I'm chat actually, can hear you. Um, with a, at a friend's house in um, outside where I normally am, so you don't get to see my pretty face, <laughs> but you do get to hear my voice. But yeah, I I always listen. Obviously, I was going to listen into the show, but it's um it's just great to see so much going on that we've got a week full of events where. We wonder if we get it all in the show or not, but yeah, there's so much going on. It really is. It, it it's it's so much fun. I've been having way too much fun with this stuff because it's like we had a lot of stuff going on before, right? Because we have all the videos from Boca Chica and then all the tests. Oh my gosh, the all night tests that were <laughs> happening at Boca Chica. <laughs> that was. Das is gonna fall asleep in his chair. It's not like we were lacking for content, right? We had tons <laughs> of content already, and now we have the access to this 24-7 camera. It gives us even more content that we can see. So I'm going to have to focus on tasks <laughs> at hand. That's what I'm going to have to do. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, but um, yeah, we should probably talk about that Starship testing, right? That's something we should uh, yeah. give a week so. recap of. Because uh, speaking of things happening all the time, so much going on, Boca Chica in a nutshell, right? You know what? I... I, I basically said I'll pop on for a bit and I don't need to take any notes. I don't need to write anything down. <laughs> yeah, right. I can just sure. literally talk, you know, because so much is going on with Starship. It becomes part of your life. It's like, obviously, Mary's taking all these videos and we're getting all this information and we can just, we, it, it comes impregnated into your mind because you just really, <laughs> you know, what's going on. We know where we are now because we have finally had that cryo test, that third cryo test be a success. And um, we're really grateful for Elon replying to the tweet where we went through the testing we said ah it's defrosting now we hope it went well went to plan we didn't ask him or anything like that we didn't go at elon can you tell us what's going on at elon 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 or anything like yeah, that yeah right we basically <laughs> just you know we just made a point to the people on twitter like that follow me to say you know we think you know that's it for now and he replied saying cryo test passed so that was a big thing because that allowed mary to go home <laughs> <laughs> and allow for people to catch up on sleep the next day but it was um it's a major milestone because this takes us forward to a brand new test phase with starship all these starships that have gone before the ones that have gone pop the ones that have gone bang the ones that have been <laughs> successful the ones that have hopped we're now into one which will get three raptors yes. they'll get a nurse cone and air surfaces i know I'm, i know mark one got nurse cone and air surfaces but yep. mark that one does not count. Yeah, <laughs> it's never going to fly. So before anyone in chat goes, well, Chris, Mark one got a nose cone and fair, and so you don't know what you're talking about. So, you know, before we get any of that, we know that happened, but this is completely different. This is it is a, a different flight thing. nose cone. This is going to have aero surfaces that have been redesigned since then. They're going to be different kind of fins and canyons than we've seen before because they've all been recycling where they're going with this on the profiles of test launches and obviously with their eventual goal of launching on a super heavy orbital. Yep. And it's crazy because we, we keep, we keep telling people not to get too, you know, excited. I won't say don't get too excited, get excited as you want. Yeah. But don't get too, you know, carried away by how this is going because they will have more failures. It, it's bound to happen with this kind mm -hmm. of test cycle. They're bound to have more failures Yeah, and it could happen with this vehicle. It could happen less than eight, landing you know sideways into the into the into the ocean for all we know 
it's all about progression. It's all about getting more test data. It's all about feeding into the future starships. Now, SN8, first of all, we thought it was going to get a nurse curve first because Elon did tweet um, a kind of like a, a progression cycle saying nurse curve next week, which was before the cryo-proofing tests. But we do now think that Raptor is going to get installed this weekend and be three of them. So it'll be the first time we'll see three together. We don't think the nurse cone is going to get installed immediately after. We're going to have to wait and see because we've still not seen what we know is SNH nurse cone. We've not seen the one that says I am SNH nurse cone. There's right. so many of them. They're scrapping the ones which were the um, the test articles, but there's still about three or four which could be potential nurse cones, but it's probably one inside a big tent which is being protected and looked after, which we rolled out and then probably installed by a crane at the launch pad. We we we're ninety nine percent sure that's how they're going to do it, but first of all, they've got to do what I think is a bigger thing, rather than the visual thing. I've seen a nurse cone installed. They're going to fire up three Raptors together for the first time ever in anywhere because they've never done it in McGregor. They've only done one at a time at McGregor. Yep. They've never done it any in Boca Chica yet, obviously because they've all had one Raptor. So this is the first time we'll see and hear three Raptors firing together. And I just hope that. The local authorities and SpaceX don't say we want an 18 mile exclusion zone. Right, yeah. Because yeah, you know, yeah. I would love for Mary to be in, in a, a, a usual position if that's possible. I don't see why not with three Raptors. It'll it'll be impressive. It'll be much more noisy. It'll be mm-hmm. a great visual sight. But it, I, I can't see any more hazard from that. Right. Because the, the fuel SM, loading is the same in yeah, the SM4 It's just boom. the number of engines. Yeah. So the exclusion zone should stay the same, I would think. I just, I just hope they they use that kind of template of saying, "Well, we know what exclusions are we needed for SM4 because that was a field vehicle that went bang." Yep. Mm-hmm. So they get an idea of the kind of safety zone they need. Putting three Raptors on it makes no difference. It's still like Thomas said, it's still the same setup as such. Yep. But I just, I just want to, I really want to hear what three Raptors yeah. sound like. Because one think... was impressive enough. Yeah. yeah, I think the safety zone is going to come down to some partial aerodynamic calculations when they uh when they actually do the hop right? right and they take that thing up to 15 kilometers if the vehicle loses all control like just becomes a dumb object that they can't do anything with it and it just falls out of the sky how what's the cone look like right if it's up at the top of where it is and it, it they just completely lose control of it what what is the cone and that comes down to some aerodynamics, some horizontal motion when it's up there. But if it's starting to fall sideways, can it can it drift to the side because of aerodynamics? Sort of like how we steer capsules when they come back in from reentry. I have a feeling a lot of the safety zone is going to be based on some math that somebody's going to have to do. If that thing completely dies, how far away from the launch pad might it land? And that'll be how they determine what the safety zone is going to be. I, I yeah. Don't... My, my two thought, my two quick, my quick two thoughts on that is: first of all, the static fire test yep. should be okay. They should and be okay. I, I want to hear. I want Mary to be in a normal place and hear yep. that and, yep. and feel it and experience it because everyone talks about going to rocket launches and the feeling of it. And this has been the nearest thing because one Raptor's powerful, great, and you can hear it; it's impressive. Yep. But three will be more like it, you know, for a kind of experience of what a, a rocket power is like. Yeah. yeah, but for the launch itself, yeah, I think that'll be a big difference. That'll be a much wider zone exclusion zone. <laughs> I did yeah. have a really funny thought of the aero surfaces locking and it floating, it floating towards Mexico, <laughs> <Right>. floating <laughs> towards Mexico. It just give like, those guys I, a surprise. <laughs> I really wonder how far it would like what the cross range is, the dead stick cross range, yeah. where it's just like oh, it completely loses control and it's really heavy, but it does have aero surfaces. How far could it go? But hopefully, the static fires, like you said, Chris. Hopefully, Mary is able to be right there. I mean, that's yeah. uh, that's going to be an amazing thing to to witness and hear and feel. It's you don't you don't hear those launches, I guess, or or those sort of tests. You're there that close to the engines, you can sort of feel them, right? Yeah. You can feel yeah. the pressure wave come over from not the launch in this case, but uh, the engine test. So yeah, uh, and another point because you were talking about you know if the aero services are locked in a certain position, it will literally like there will be a small amount of lift generated and it will literally start gliding away. Right. Um, and so we talked about this earlier, and I think the consensus is that. That's one of the reasons we're expecting SNA will have a flight termination system. Right. If they do lose control like that, especially if it's like at the at Apogee 
the last thing you want is for it to just fall and allow it to like drift in a certain direction. Yep. Cause that exclusion zone could be miles and miles if that's the case. Yep. Um, so I think we're expecting a flight termination system that can detonate the vehicle. Um, you'll have a big debris field, um, but that will, that will not have cross range capability to right. drift away. <laughs> It'll be more contained. It'll just um, come down. Right. Is yes, it? exactly. <laughs> You know what I think they'll use? They'll use like a, a popper device on the on a CRPV. Yeah, because they're internal now. Maybe all you got to do is pop on a CRPVs. We saw up with them um, CRS. Well, yeah, we know what happens so, when that happens. It works. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. a good point. They could just do that, and it's, you don't need a super like they don't need the automated flight termination system that they use on Falcons and stuff. It could right. be a relatively simple system. Right. Little, and if it's not a CRPV thing, unzip the fuel tanks as soon as the methane and oxides are mixed that thing's gone anyways so yep yep um, like that would work you know there's there's ways they can implement it and so chris i've just been rolling the video these are the daily videos but i've got yep. like so many daily videos here um is there anything specific you want me to show that came through i mean sna testing sn11 thrust section i mean there's so many anything specific you want me to bring up you've covered the first part i want to talk about i don't know if you can find anything with super heavy in the title because that'd be the next thing i want to talk about but um, i think the weekly video from last week had some super heavy stuff right. yeah super heavy assembly i got that one for you here we go and while we're just stop looking at nurse cones there that's Jack. um yeah there's so many <laughs> nurse cones <laughs> there's jack <laughs> there we go the weekly update oh, what's up jack not calling jack a nurse cone oh, what <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just I, I think what is interesting is that we were talking about S and A, the achievements it'll be doing for go. the first time. I say achievements because I'm positive thinking in that respect. Just as we, just as the hops went well, and they didn't really expect them to go well, so there's always some positivity behind it all. Um, is that if S and A does fail, they have S and nine, S and ten, S and eleven, and S and twelve all in production. So they are, and Elon said it. He said it himself. They have other starships ready to go if they lose SN8. And, and I'm just, that I'm was his way. That's the, whole the time video. he used a crater for reference to it as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I I do think that if they do lose SN8, it's not terrible. I, I was mentioning this the other night. It, it's not a terrible thing, even though some elements of the media will try and make a big deal out of it because that negative Elon headlines sell. Yeah, but they do. I, I think it's our job with a more hardcore audience and a wide ranging hardcore audience for all of us to do our part and make sure we all inform people, your friends and family who may be reading those headlines that this is what a test program is all about. This is why they, you know, they push the boundaries and they can have in this case, other vehicles ready to learn from it and ready to go again. And that is just a huge thing. I've not seen anything like this ever since I've been covering spaceflight, where they've had several other vehicles yeah. in standby, ready to go and, you know, to the sacrificial altar almost. You know, they're just there, ready to go. And yep. they're doing it on purpose. So I'm very hopeful about the fact they've got several other vehicles ready to go. SN9 is pretty much ready to go already. So, yeah, I'm very hopeful about that. And we're just looking at video now. <laughs> we're just looking at nope. belly flop. Just I nope haven't really seen big. this video yet. This is great. I'm going to have to go watch this after this. Yeah, uh, nope. y'all. What what we're running in the background? This is a, a weekly update. We were doing weekly updates for a while because we have the daily videos. What's going on at Boca Chica? And then for a couple weeks, we did a weekly update where we looked at all the things over the course of the week. And we actually had narration where somebody would come on and actually explain what had happened. We got busy with all sorts of other stuff, but we're hoping to get the weekly sort of the weekly wrap ups almost of what's gone on over the week. And this one, Jack did this one. He did all the VO and stuff for it, and it covers everything that happened in that prior period. So hopefully, we keep those going. It's just we got a we got a lot of uh, a lot of juggling that we're doing here to keep up with everything. So and you know what, talking about keeping up with things, Jack just mentioned the back channel, a very important point which I forgot because of all the things going on, I completely forgot about SN seven point one being eaten, devoured by a digger. Oh which yeah, was a surreal thing to watch because beat it was all the just, heck. Yeah, they should be able to see it in our videos with a thumbnail for it because the thumb it made a thumbnail because it was just so dramatic. But this is big JCB. I don't know if you call them JCBs in the States, but this big digger thing with an arm. And it was just devouring SN7.1. They literally pulled it off the, the mount unceremoniously. There you go. I got it. Digging into it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> oh, my word. It's not also, really the right tool for this job. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the funny thing is, we're all thinking, ha ha, big digger eating a starship. 
But actually, that's the first time we've seen that side of the thrust putt yep. with it all tubed mm-hmm. up. So that was also a very nice, unique angle Mary got there because that showed you a lot of the internal plumbings and how it works. Obviously not ITARD because, you know, they're not they're not even hiding the Raptors under a rug. You know, yep. They're just literally running them about. I think they're probably saying to um, foreign entities, you know, if you want to try and repeat this, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, right. What are you going to do? Find yourself an Elon. Yeah. And not for the best, for the money. Yeah. Maybe they could but, repeat, yeah. repeat the digger tearing this thing apart. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And also, I mean, there's so much going on. It's, Unceremonious. It's wanna, like, I, look at this. Yeah, no, yeah. It's quite brutal. We've seen it before, though, with some of the other uh, previous test tanks and, and failed Starship tests. They just start chewing into it. I think, <laughs> you know, they, they keep saying Elon said he was going to make a test, uh, some Tesla Cybertrucks out of it because Tim Dodd's got his eye on one of money. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> yeah. We might be looking at some future Cybertrucks right now. <laughs> I mean, part of the problem is that it's it's like a big bowl of jello. And when he tries to grab something, there's nothing to grab it with here, right? Right. Because they, they, make, they make scrapping arms that actually have teeth on them to cut things like this. That's a thing that they make for these these big uh, diggers, as we call them. Um, SpaceX didn't get the memo, clearly. He doesn't have the right tool for this job. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you noticed it's always United Rentals as well? They, oh, they, yeah. They yeah. to place their, um, their name just perfectly for all our videos. It's just yeah. like, I'm surprised they've not turned around and said, well, we appreciate all the free advertising. We're going to, we're, we'll, we'll buy Mary a run United Rentals. <laughs> right. A lift thing, or you know. something, right? Get her a yeah. lift, right? Yeah. <laughs> if there were uh, we got fair. a couple uh, questions if we want to go through. Yeah, yeah. grab yeah, them. Yeah, some questions. Uh, have we spotted any Raptors headed to the pad yet? Oh. Uh, ironically, that ties in with something Jack just brought up again because I, the, there is so much going on that it's easy to forget certain milestones. And one milestone was SN29, which was used on the hop for SN6 and performed very well, even better than SN5's Raptor, which was SN27. Uh, I think it was. But SN29's gone back to McGregor now, so that's always been refurbed. Nothing went wrong with it. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. They're going to use three new Raptors with um, SN8. And those Raptors we have not yet seen, but... I can guarantee you, Mary, will be look on the lookout for them. Yep. She sent me a message earlier, wondering, you know, if, if we knew a time they were going to arrive. But we believe they're there now, and we're just now waiting to see if they roll them out on the back on a forklift truck or all together on one flatbed. Yep. Which would be surreal. But that's the photo mm-hmm. Mary's looking for right now. Oh, geez. Can you imagine like three of them on a flatbed, just like Raptor, yeah. Raptor, Raptor, and they roll it out there before that, that, it would set in that it's happening. If I yeah. saw that. Yeah, but that is like the next milestone. And we were talking about, you know, like if, if SN8 doesn't go well, it's it's not the worst thing in the world, Um, which is, you know, completely true. But and I, I've been like worried because I'm like, I don't I see a lot of ways SN8 flight could go wrong. It's the first it's the first flight with three Raptors. It's the first in-air relight of the Raptor engines. Yep. It's the first one with all those aerodynamic services coming into play and some dramatic maneuvers. It's a very high altitude and high speed. A flight it's a long duration flight so the raptors have to burn for a while uh twice yep. um so all of that coming into play i've been like there's a lot of reasons to think they won't get it right the first time which is again okay but um it's also worth noting <laughs> that all of the test flights in the starship test program starhopper and sn5 and sn6 yep. all went off successfully so yep. and every time we're like oh this is another way you know it's, they're not going to get it right the first time they, they can't get it right the first time but then they do so i think this one's the most ambitious yet for sure but it could also they could really be more prepared for this than even we think and they could go well um well I, i'm just gonna it's gonna be exciting to watch at the yep. least absolutely and I, I gotta do this really quickly y'all i just caught this out of the corner of my eye but uh saga fuji actually <laughs> moved its cranes over and so now we have a full shot of the SpaceX logo, the booster over at Port Canaveral. Um, this just happened. I just wanted to bring it up really quickly before they brought it back over. But there is that super sooty SpaceX logo That's on nice. Booster 1050A. Look at that. Ah. Clearly, yeah, everybody, tweet, everybody, everybody tweeted the company about their shame about obscuring the viewers' work. Let's not make any enemies. Alive. Like yeah, the right. first week of Fleet Camp, let's not make any enemies, all right? Saga Fuji, you're all good. You do your thing. Unload that cargo. <laughs> Anyways, I, I saw that out of the corner of my eye really quickly. I just wanted to bring it up. Back to Starship. Uh, do we have a timeline for the 15-kilometer hop? Because that's another question we've got in chat here. 
I don't think. No, we've only got. In fact, SpaceX has not put anything out officially. All we've had, and it's very easy to blur the lines, is people, amateurs, doing their own animations and their own renders. Right. And then Elon kind of votes on them on Twitter by <laughs> saying, that looks good, or that we're going to do a bit differently, or whatever. <laughs> it, it's, it's very surreal how we're getting this information on future things. We get all the live and all the real views from Mary, but the future ideas and the future projects and the future pro flight profiles are all from people on the internet. And then Elon himself vetting them on Twitter. So, yeah, it's surreal. Yeah, I was, I was actually bringing one of those up from a Neopork here because just the yeah. other day, Neopork did this render starting to put some of the TPS, the, the thermal protection system tiles, on the bottom of Starship and a couple renders of how those may come together. And this is what you're talking about, Chris. Like, we don't know. We're just guessing. Neopork's just guessing how that's going to work. And Elon actually hops in and says... Uh, well, nope, that's not the one I was looking for. That's the one I responded to. But Elon actually hops in and says that there's going to be tiles on the hot side. Here it is right here. Tiles will be on the hot side of the flaps too. A tough problem is sealing the moving flap. So literally getting technical information about how it works on Twitter. Yeah. Or how it's supposed to work. Yeah. Way SpaceX would volunteer that information. And ironically, SpaceX pr uh, pr uh, press relations and other companies with press relations they don't decide what they can and can't say. They ask their bosses what they can mm -hmm. and can't say. So when the boss goes on Twitter and says it anyway, it's kind of like, it's that's why I find it surreal that we've yep. got such an active yep. um, chief designer and CEO of a big company as well, and someone as famous as Elon, literally interacting with anybody. I mean, he doesn't pick and choose. He interacts with anybody really who just asks. He happens to see the questions. So it's really good. Yeah, it really is. It's it's a cool way to get information. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <clears throat> Do we have? I mentioned that uh, SNA will be like a nice long duration flight, and that's you know something to potentially be concerned about, but maybe not. Um, but someone wants to know: Do we have an estimate on how long that flight will be, up to fifteen kilometers and back, if it proceeds nominally? Oh, geez. Like that's something I hadn't thought about. I'm going to bet two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes short. might be short, but. It's just, it's just, they want to get it up and down as fast as possible without, you know, faffing around too much. The, the, this, this question guessed more than five minutes, perhaps. And I think I feel like maybe four or five minutes might be closer. It's hard to say. Well, it's going to get up there really fast with three Raptors. Yeah. All the fuel. It's going to get up there to 15 really fast. It's going to just float back for about, what, 30 seconds? Then it's going to relight and do the swing. Yeah. Ooh, you know, I think it'd be quite fast. Yeah, maybe. Maybe two minutes is closer. So your your biggest known, right? It can go up at any rate it wants. It can go up fast or it can yeah. it can sort of ease its way up. You come down to fuel and thrust to weight ratios and, and burning right. fuel to, to get there. So I, th I think they're going to split the difference there. They're not going to go full launch speed where they just keep accelerating and go. But they're not going to go like like up really slowly with like a 1.01 thrust to weight ratio because so weight ratio, they would take too much fuel to do that. But the one thing we do know, the one thing that we could calculate is the all time from a physics perspective from 15 mm -hmm. kilometers to zero unpowered because you're going to think they're going to get up there the vertical velocity is going to have to come to zero right so that it can start coming back down and if the engines are off something at 15 kilometers starting at zero how long would it take it to hit the ground knowing at the end they will have a little bit of they'll turn the engines back on and it'll actually land instead of hitting the ground so from a from a calculable physics perspective i think that's where we could start. 15 kilometers, zero velocity, down to the ground. I, I don't know if I can do that on Google real quick, but somebody can do that and, and calculate that, and that'll give us yeah. at least half the flight time. You could, you could approximate it, I mean, because if you, what, you need to know the exact drag characteristics of Starship to get it more precise. Exactly, if you just, yeah. If you, if you negated drag for a bit, you'd get an approximation um, that would be a little um, faster than what it would actually be. Um, right. But you could estimate it that way. That, could, that might be worth doing the math on. I'm Googling. You keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, we were talking about, let's see. Well, so before all that happens, we were expecting Raptor install as soon as this weekend. Um, and then we're expecting some sort of static fire test. Um, do we know? I mean, so do, we don't really have a timeline for that because we need the Raptors installed first, right, Chris? Yeah, we, we, we're, we're all in a new territory now. We're all in brand new territory. We know what one Raptor looks like when it's installed and how long it mm -hmm. takes. Uh, we just know that the thrust rams are being removed. So that was a big key 
towards the next milestone of installing the Raptors. And we just want to see them rolling out now, and then we can just follow it from there. You know, when it takes, how long it takes, it doesn't matter because there's no rush for this, but it's, it's all the next step towards this big flight. Yeah. So I, I got the number there for us real quick, Chris. Um, and this may be where your two minute guess came from. Ah. I, I Googled and I found something called the splat calculator. <laughs> I, I, I built that site. Yeah. <laughs> Which is an all, it's an online calculator and you put in your height in meters and uh, it'll tell you what your speed at impact disregarding the, uh, the aerodynamics like Thomas was saying. So if you're at 15,000 meters, so 15 kilometers, 15,000 meters, it will take you 55 seconds to go from zero to the ground if you start at 15 kilometers, according to this yeah. flat calculator here. Your speed at impact will be 542 meters per second. 542 meters per second, so a half kilometer per second, disregarding aerodynamic drag, like Thomas said. Realistically, yeah. it would be longer because drag would right. slow you down a little bit. In fact, I would venture going... that that's even faster than a starship of terminal velocity, So, because mm. especially ah. coming down sideways, because... That's des that orientation is nothing designed for nothing but to be high in drag. Um, so yeah, it's going to be way longer than yeah. that. But that's that's a lower bound. Gotcha. So that that's as fast as it could go, completely disregarding yeah. aerodynamics. Unless it's it like firing its engines longer. downward, which is a <laughs> bad situation for there. everyone involved. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, that's that's sort of the disregarding aerodynamics, and clearly aerodynamics is a huge part of Starship's flight profile, mm. right? So. It's going to be more than two minutes. Let's put it that way. Yes. I think. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, we also super chats. To, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. oh, yeah. Go ahead. I, I wanted to bring up because one of, one of these super chats is another static fire question, and it's a good one right. that I wanted to relay to you guys. Well, SpaceX, first of all, thank you, Mark, for the super chat. Uh, will SpaceX do two static fires that would approximate a mid air relight? So, so like, Fire the engines Ooh. for a bit as if that's a liftoff, shut them off, that's a good and then light them again as, as to simulate a mid-air reflight. Could they do that in a sort of uh, static fire setting? It's a great question because I never really appreciated that before. It, it, we just know Elon's only mentioned the static fires once, and he mentioned they're going to do one static fire, do a data review, and then do another static fire. Yeah. And I can't remember if there was like a, or either we imagined it or assumed it or he mentioned it himself. There'd be a gap about a week between the two. I, I think, do not remember where if that I came from anywhere. I mean, it'll take me a while to search it, but let's yeah. put it this way. I don't think he, he was referring to the potential of mimicking a relight. No, I don't think so either. Fire, pause, static fire again, literally within minutes, you know. So I think that is something they've not mentioned, and it's something that would be very interesting to, to test that relight. The problem uh, is if it's held down on the stand, like you yeah. can't fire the Raptors for the duration that the flight would be because you're going to torch yeah. everything at the pad. And and static fire tests are really all about just getting some engine parameters. They're not, you mm. know, to, their, to, to mimic profiles like, say, a McGregor test fire or maybe, you know, like the SLS Green Run is, is to mimic a flight duration firing. Right. So, yeah, I think maybe not. But it's, it's a damn good question. I've never thought yeah. about it before. SLS uh, can do that because they have that massive test stand over mm, there with the water Right, which is built for the long duration static fires. Yep, yeah. yep. But and SpaceX that's what the stand that McGregor like that. is for the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters. That stand is designed for a much longer duration right. firing that they can do a full motion duration burn. Right. Uh, which is, but the stand at Boca Chica is designed to support a vehicle that is lifting off. Right. Um, so the static fires they do there have to be very brief. Yeah, correct to what I said. It's SpaceX doesn't have anything like that at Boca Chica. There's no yes. test stand where they could put this thing together and run it for that long because this is, like you said, this is a launch stand. It assumes either a really quick fire, like a and then off, or they light and the thing takes off so the energy is removed from that launch stand. So, and at the, at the end of that Super Jack question, Chris, favorite Nightwish song? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, tell you what, there's so much to choose from. Um, if you, I'll put a link in. In fact, there's um, a, a song <laughs> called Ghost River at Wacken, where I, I think it just gets the most. Um, re, uh, yeah, I'll put it into chat. Okay. I, we can't play it, can we? Because we'll get copyright. No, stuff. we can't no. play it. On no, we can't play it. No, but you yeah, can try I to think... sing it. No, actually, you can't. <laughs> right no, 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 no. Um, everybody <laughs> says watch that. They said that's amazing. So yeah, I'll put it into chat for a link. Here. Go, Ghost <laughs> there River. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that's a random super... question. <laughs> well, it was part of the static fire question. I figured I should oh, right. at least relay it. 
um uh super chat from acadia thank you so much uh a question of, oh we got another fleet cam question to us oh, any chance question. we get a live stream of falcon 9 going vertical we've never seen one never seen a rocket go vertical before and the crew one rocket would be super cool to see go vertical we can't see we don't have line of sight with 39a right uh, not 39A. No, we cannot see 39A. So, yeah, so we wouldn't be able to see that particular rocket go vertical, we but could we see... do have a view of pad 40. Yep, we could see pad 40. The trick with going vertical is that there's not usually an announced time. Right. Like SpaceX doesn't publish when that's going to happen, and you're not going to have a lot of time. Like somebody would have to be there watching the camera, and as soon as they see the tip of the Falcon, I'm okay. Start a live stream, right? We're not going to get a lot of notice on a live stream like that. So, will we be able to see it? Will we be able to get a time lapse of it? Absolutely. We messed up. We should have seen him taking GPS three down, but we yeah. took the camera and we pointed it over at the the fleet catcher, the fairing catchers, and we recorded that night that they actually took it down. The fairing catchers instead of recording pad forty when they yeah, brought and GPS then when we looked again, it was already horizontal. <laughs> yeah, so we looked it. back over and like sometime between these times, like, but we can absolutely do that. The camera can see it if it's at pad forty. It can see them verticating. You can see them going from horizontal to vertical. It's just timing in a notice for a live stream is going to be super rough there that's yeah. almost more challenging than texas tank watching like we could sit yeah. there for 12 hours and nothing could happen for 12 hours and we just hit right it like, <laughs> yeah uh new membership from josh maley thank you so much for the support uh future martian 97 a regular in chat with the super chat the best part of the weekend is watching this show appreciate nice. the support uh and then zen dragon says what future martian said thank you all you're awesome so thank you so much <laughs> uh and then sarah with the super chat uh nine curly elves as das would call them nine, uh, nine, nine. Towards, towards a backup fleet camp for mary thank you so much for the support there uh, sarah's bob, a regular as well yes absolutely and then bob fillmore with the new membership thank you everyone for all the super chats and memberships we appreciate your support yeah, and let me run over to Twitch really quickly because I know I haven't been reading as many. We just we just sort of go off and ask all sorts of questions, and we 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 talk about stuff. Uh, Trouble Magnet, thank you so much for the sub over on Twitch. Eight months, time flies like a falcon. We appreciate the uh, support there, Trouble Magnet. Well, hold on, a GPS falcon or a Starlink falcon? Because the only <laughs> one of those actually flew. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> time flies like an Antares. Wait, I mean that one got scrubbed too. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, time flies. Let's leave it at that. But uh, thank you so much for the support there, Trouble Magnet. And then a question just really quickly. Are they going to fly any people on the first crewed starship? Uh, well, the first crewed starship, well, sure, they would fly people because it well, wouldn't be crewed. Uh, by time. definition, yes. <laughs> but the <laughs> tests that they are doing are not going to be crewed at all. They are a long way from putting people on a starship. We yep. don't know how many yeah. people they'll put on the first one. Uh, but there, there's a lot, a lot of flights that they have to do with Starship before they'll ever put a human being on it. Elon tweeted something like, we want to fly hundreds of Starship missions before a crew ever goes right. on board. So there are ways away from that. And now, part of that is Starship, the, the idea behind Starship, you want to have a really fast launch case. You want to launch very frequently so that hundreds of launches could come sooner than, you, you know, like the Falcon 9 fleet hasn't had 100 missions yet, but they're right. flying crew already because um, there's been a lot of time there. Uh, Starship will have possibly more flights before it flies crew but in a shorter time frame because it's going to fly so often um but yeah there are ways off from that you want to get to orbit successfully you want to demonstrate landing successfully and repeatedly um, we want to make sure all of that is reliable um, especially because landing a crew vehicle vertically with under propulsive landing is something that hasn't uh, happened before on the scale you could say i guess the apollo loon land there technically did that um, right but but that, that's a, a, a very yeah on the moon a very different environment a very different scale of vehicle um and of course there was tons of testing ahead of that so um yeah we're a ways off from that yeah I just like to quickly say that klaus klaus says 100 mannequins i just <laughs> i'm just imagining 100 ripley's I've got oh, an image nice. of that that vehicle with all the SR-71 pilots in front of an <laughs> yeah. SR-71 in the dark visors, and they're all in the spacesuit just kind of staring at the camera. I'm getting the same vibe from a bunch of SpaceX spacesuits with mannequins just sitting in a starship. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, what else do I, I want to make sure we go through everything. Let me look at the doc we, we were talking a lot about starship what's going on what's a, let's sort of to wrap starship up since we're at 425 right now what's the next thing we expect to see out there and what's the timing look like at uh, boca chica we're still rolling video from boca chica there what do we expect next from boca chica uh live stream wise maybe oh that depends really on mary doesn't it uh, obviously the static we'd love that's why i was mentioning hope she can go in a normal position we hope the static fire yep testing I mean, let's face it, I'd be quite interested in just the um, pre-burners and the um, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Tests such as that rather than the yeah, fire itself, which you know we don't know when they'll actually do it just yet, but that'll be something interesting. But anything really, I mean, you can't go wrong with Boca Chica because it's just like a magical fairground for rockets. <laughs> it really is. I, I could literally, I could quite happily get a tent, get on a plane, and just basically camp out there, you know, especially oh, when yeah. it's now cooler. <laughs> We've, uh, you can tell that Chris has never been to South Texas. Like camping in a nope. tent at the beach, the mosquitoes are going to carry you <laughs> off, Chris. They're going to pick you up and carry you to Mexico. There's so many mosquitoes out there. I've watched Breaking Bad. I'm all right. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not even the same place. That's New Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> Breaking Bad is like nice and dry desert, high desert environment. Because Albuquerque is like at five, 6,000 feet, right? Albuquerque's actually yeah. got – it's about the same as Denver, if I'm not mistaken. I have to look it up. Santa Fe is 7,000, I know. But – down on the coast, there's so many mosquitoes down there, and it's just another testament to Mary's resilience and her dedication to get all these videos. It's hot, it's humid, look at the palm trees moving, the wind is blowing, there's so many bugs, it's a salt marsh all around the area, and I went out there with Mary, and I walked around taking pictures for about an hour once, and I came back just annihilated by mosquitoes, so... <laughs> Mary's dedication in bringing these videos out here. Chris, I want you to get to Boca Chica. I am going to buy stock in bug spray companies before you go, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking forward. To, I, I really am. I'm looking forward to that just because of the experience, but I don't think I could do it every day. Yeah. No. Oh, it's it's tough out there for sure. And, and that's one more reason. I know people may think that we are like Adam from Adam, like, oh, Mary, Mary, Mary. It's because she deserves it. It's because being out there True. every single day is a task and it's not like she's in hawaii at this beautiful <laughs> lo beach location it's rough out there y'all so always massive thanks to mary for bringing us these sorts of videos um we i will just quickly say to the english people in chat that i have been to scarborough beach and i've been i've survived donkey rides as a child <laughs> and they will all go wow and they're complaining about boca chica he's done that <laughs> donkey <laughs> yeah. rides at scarborough beach is that a thing yeah, it is. <laughs> they have manic donkeys, which are all like rabies and one of you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, um, let's see here. I'm going to roll through the topics. We talked all about Starship. Uh, next testing, we know that there's going to get some Raptors on there. We usually don't stream the installation of Raptors because you can't really see much, but Mary will definitely get some video because she's out there, got her eyes open watching for them. So be looking for the daily updates on the YouTube channel over here if you're looking for information on the Raptors. Then once those get in, we're expecting some pre-burners and spool-ups and, and static fires. Don't have exact dates on that yet. So again, since we don't have the exact dates, follow us here, turn on the notifications. When we go live, when we upload a video, you'll know something's going on. Also on Twitter, up there at the top, you see at NASA Spaceflight. That's like NASA Spaceflight Actual. That's Chris B. And if there's something going on that we're covering, it, you'll see it on that account there. So if one of the mods, could somebody get a link over to on Twitter to Chris B's Twitter? That is the number one thing you want to make sure you're following so that you don't miss anything since we don't know the exact dates. Uh, but that sort of covers Starship. We At the very beginning, we talked about that late-breaking news. Crew 1 delayed till mid-November. Uh, it was supposed to be a spooky launch where the astronauts were going to dress up as astronauts and knock on the door. Of the, uh, I know. I was so station. looking forward to that. <laughs> and say trick or treat, and then they give them some candy out the uh, the airlock there. But that is no longer happening. Crew delayed, delay or crew one delayed back to mid November again. That's that SpaceX launch for the first operational launch of crew. DM one was was Bob and Doug was Bob and Doug DM2. demo two. DM2. Demo two. Thank you. DM two. DM1 was not crewed. DM2 yeah. had the crew in it. So when Bob and Doug went up, DM2, that was, yes, the first crewed flight, American astronauts, American rockets, American soil, <laughs> but that was still their demo mission. And so yeah. this one coming up is the operational crew mission. That was delayed till mid-November. Uh, we did talk about the Starlink launch that happened, and we covered that live stream. Thanks to you being out there, Thomas. Thank you so much for that. Um, let me pop back over here. I'm just making sure we went through all the topics. Back to Trio intro. Uh, Fleet Cam, we didn't actually run this one. So let's put this on in the background. This is another Fleet Cam video that we captured of the fairing arrival. So this was our first view. I'm going to say this really quickly. This oh, yeah. was our first view of Fleet Cam of what we could see from the ships. And we were just looking up towards Jetty Park. This is sort of out yes. to sea. And those, Michael and I, <laughs> We're seeing this thing come around the corner and those arms of the fairing catcher ships that's coming around right there. That's the first thing we saw of the SpaceX ships, those fairing catchers on the fleet cam. It's night. We were dialing in the settings and stuff, but 
Michael and I just about lost ourselves. Like, oh my god, you're posted up in Discord. Like, you have to be kidding me. Ah. So uh <laughs> this was this was Fleet Cam and these were the fairing catchers. This is a highlight video that Michael made. Um Let's see here. We got the booster return as well. We covered that earlier where we saw booster 1058 coming on back into port. And that's the live views we have on Fleet Cam. They haven't quite laid that one down horizontal to take it back for processing. Uh, we did talk about NG-14. So the Cygnus supply vehicle being berthed at the International Space Station. That's already happened. Uh, we did not cover this. I know it's 431, but we started like nine minutes late. We started a little late, Yeah, yeah. So should we cover this news really we can, quickly? We can cover it briefly if you'd like, sure. It's Fleet Cam! Look at that! <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> this is happening at 5 a.m. They are literally massive speedboats with big arms. Yes. That's what they are, aren't they? They are, they are speedboats. They're, they're really, really fast and maneuverable. Yeah, look look at that. The video here, this time-lapse, Chris, they have, they have bow and stern thrusters, and they can actually translate side to side. Mm -hmm. It's not just the ships go forward and back and after turn. These fairing catchers can actually translate side to side. So they just come up to the dock and they bloop, go over to the dock sideways. Yeah. So anyways, um, let's talk one. about this. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying that and there's uh, Go Mischief, the other uh, one, which yeah. did not catch a fairing, but fished one out of the ocean. Yep. And they, but we both saw the fairings on them because we well, yes. came at five in the morning, right? <laughs> uh, but we did not cover this. Let's cover this really quickly because this is also important information. Um, Chris Ferguson. Wait, that's the wrong... The wrong Twitter second. link. Yeah, I got the wrong Twitter link. Stand by. Uh, there is the we wrong go. One in the, there we go. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, Chris Ferguson, who was going to be the commander of the Starliner crew flight test mission um, on behalf of Boeing, not actually as a NASA astronaut. Of course, he was the commander of the final space shuttle mission, STS-135, um, then retired from NASA and was working with Boeing on their Starliner program. Um, said for personal reasons, he's actually stepping down as commander of crew flight test. He will be replaced by Barry Wilmore, a NASA astronaut taking over as commander. Um, so a crew change for the first crewed flight of Starliner, basically the Boeing version of the Demo 2 mission. Um, of course, Starliner still has to repeat its uncrewed orbital flight test mission first, OFT2, which it will launch early next year. Um, and that will precede a crewed flight test before operational mission. So Chris Ferguson no longer commanding that mission, still working the Starliner program, but won't be on board. Um, and Barry Wilmar is taking his place. Yeah, gotcha. So that was a that was a big thing. We're gonna we're gonna need to come up with a better way to show tweets, I think, like something that just shows the tweet in there. You know what I mean? Instead of all this other Twitter stuff in the background. But uh that was some news we didn't do. This was another one, Thomas, that we didn't quite go over. This is another tweet about the satellite manufacturing contract. Yes. Uh, yeah, this was this was from Sandra Irwin. Uh, SpaceX was and um L3 Harris were both awarded contracts to build four satellites each. Um, SpaceX is building theirs based on the Starlink satellite bus, um, and these are going to be missile warning satellites for the Department of Defense. Um, so SpaceX now not only in the business of launching, of building their own satellites, and of course launching satellites, SpaceX now in the business of building satellites for other customers. They're going to take their Starlink design and adapt it to this Department of Defense mission, um, and we're expecting that to be spread across a couple launches. Um, very high chance that SpaceX also uh, launches that mission um, with the Starlink satellites on board, but that'll be a different procurement going on. Um, but SpaceX is actually now building satellites as a satellite manufacturer. Gotcha. And uh, that is... Oh, One here's of the piece the other of news thing. coming up next week. Go we've ahead, got yeah. the launch of MS-17, which yes. is including the wonderful Kate Rubins, who follows us on Twitter. And mm -hmm. she is probably one of the cleverest people on the planet who goes to the ISS and does clever stuff there as well. That's so this is Wednesday. A, this is a video from Roscosmos, and that, oh, there we that go. was Wednesday. <laughs> That's time. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. This this is the uh, this is them moving the vehicle, getting ready to roll out to the pad, which should come up in just the next couple of days. Actually, um, this is the Soyuz two rocket, which will launch, uh, like I said, Kate Rubens, and I'm forgetting the other two crew members. It's three crew members <laughs> to the ISS. Look, I got I got to point this out really quickly. I love you, Roscosmos. I love Soyuz, but watch, watch the vehicle rock when it comes to a stop. Yeah. <laughs> did you see how they cut that? They they did that cut in the video right there because it comes yep. to a stop and the whole thing. That video, that rocket was going like this. So they're like, eh, launch the rocket. Eh, just put it in there and put it on the train. Like I saw that that rock when they stopped the crane. Can you imagine NASA? Like NASA's like, mm, 
Yeah, come to a stop. <laughs> you never see it. Here it's just like, I don't know. Got to get it on the crane. Anyways, uh, that's uh, coming up this week, right? Yeah, and I've got the crew up now. It is Kate Rubens is the American representative on Soyuz, and then two Russian cosmonauts, both named Sergey. Come on, Roscosmos, you gotta do. So we got Sergey Ryzikov, Ryzikov, and, and Sergey Kuzvertsev. Uh, yeah, that's on his first flight. Um, I'm sorry if I'm butchering those uh, um, <laughs> pronunciations, but two Sergeys and Kate Rubens. That's cool. Sorry, I was I was looking at him taking those uh, nose cone protectors or not nose cone, the engine bell protectors out. Like I'd never mm -hmm. seen that before. So and that's the abort. And there's system. them installing the launch abort tower. Of course, yeah. very important. Very cool. Um, we also had the news on NROL 44, and I know we're starting to wrap it up here. But NROL 44. Nathan yeah, that should Clark. hopefully come up this next week. Another launch attempt for Delta for Heavy. Hopefully. Watch it later. Let's see. According to Nathan, uh, this was a couple days ago, October 7th and yeah. the 10th. So this is three days old, but it says Delta Four Heavy in row 44 at no earlier than October 15th at 10 p.m. But again, that's waiting. Do we get any other confirmation besides yeah, that? Yeah, so ULA has not confirmed that. So this this is usually the first word we get. They put out hazard notices. They file those kind of things. Um, once we get a little closer, ULA will confirm that launch date or not if they have to launch it later. Um, yeah. But this is a sign that that could be when they are targeting. Uh, stand by for official news on that launch date. Gotcha. And the last thing, I just covered all the things because I did take a lot of time for Fleet Cam. Uh, the mobile launcher, ML1, yeah. rolling out to 39B coming up in a couple days here, right? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll a week or so. Yeah. Thomas, you let's quickly interject with the, with the wording of it. It was because they had more time on their hands to <laughs> head of um, yeah, stacking that's operations. True. In other words, we're waiting for the core stage. Still, we might as well take it for a roll. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why they were rolling this thing out because they didn't have anything else that's to right. do because the core stage is still getting core staged or whatever yep. they do with core yes. stages. <laughs> <laughs> But that is that is coming up uh, in a couple of days. I guess they're gonna go blow the carbon out of the generators on the uh, <laughs> the crawler there. Make sure everything still runs and stuff. But that gets us through all of our different things. Did we miss any super chats or anything? Uh, over I think here? we got one more. Harry Young, who is a regular on chat, says, "I confused a lot of people on the bus by laughing at your jokes on NSF Live. <laughs> Always a great quality content time. Thanks for everyone on comms. Appreciate you, Harry." absolutely and y'all i know there's so many questions that came through as well as always there's there's a ton of people watching and there's a ton of good questions in and today was one of our sort of uh off the cuff we didn't have an exact schedule and stuff like that we we're just talking about cool stuff that we wanted to share with you that happened this week and i know that a lot of it was this camera that's at the port that i can control robotically now <laughs> um so i appreciate y'all hanging out with 2100 people watching over here we need a longer show says martin smith the problem is, if it was three hours long, we could probably hang out and talk for three hours. Like, where does it Right, end? yeah, that's the problem. It would totally work. <laughs> Our um, long shows are the hours-long Boca Chica streams, okay? That's what you got to go. come to, because then it's we the just blabber on while watching things. It's an average, average length I give to a uh, question answer. So <laughs> I yeah. could do three hours on one question. Oh yeah, it's there's so there's so much stuff going on. There's so much content to cover. All the different companies, all the different types of vehicles. Now we're looking at boats and cranes at the port and this sort of stuff. <laughs> I mean, we have the space station that's doing stuff. It's it's an exciting time to be keeping up with the stuff, just because there's so much going on. So we're uh we're happy to be able to share all this stuff with you. Apologize, we started a couple minutes late here today, but we wanted to make sure that we covered everything. Let me check Twitch really quickly. I know that I'm not always reading Twitch as much. Let's see here. Really quick, do we do we have any clue how long it takes them to install one Raptor? Like, it's like a day operation, right? They just roll out the Raptor van, and the next day the Raptor's on there, right, Chris? Yep. Yeah, it's yeah, a one-day thing. Yeah, so I wonder if that's... Does that mean that to install three Raptors will take three days, or is there some economy of doing it at the same time? Like, I, I, I imagine I it think, may take three days. I think they might test doing it all together at the same time because that's what they're going to do with the super heavies eventually, haven't they? They're going to install 28 engines. They don't want to be taking 28 days to install right. 28 oh, engines. Oh, so yeah. Go for dual operations. Yeah, they're probably going to have to, they're going to have to cut it down where they can do that more quickly because once they get yep. more engines on the bottom of those things, that's a great point. Um, anyways, is there anything else that we didn't cover or are we pretty good here, I think, right? I think we're pretty good. I think Pretty so. Good, but I'll just go quickly, quickly mention to everybody to, to re-emphasize because I, I started this site, so I've got to keep emphasizing. We're going to keep <laughs> growing. And we're going to keep pushing it. So keep supporting us. 
and we'll have more surprises for you as we go along. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I've, I've said the same sort of thing there, Chris. Uh, with the fleet cam, you know, we brought fleet cam online. We didn't tell anybody about it. Oh, look, it's a live view to the port. You see how the crane's in the way? <laughs> That's why I showed you earlier. Um, we brought that online because of y'all's support. All the super chats that come in, we're not just sitting here like, aha, now I'm going to take a swim in these stacks of dollar bills or whatever. <laughs> uh, we do reinvest that back into the stream. New equipment, we pay our expenses, data and stuff like that. We have lots of cool ideas. I think sort of the, the teleoperation, the robotic camera that we've sort of proved with Fleet Cam here may be deployed in some other situations. I want to get one that can track launches. Right, so I want a couple cameras, like maybe one that somebody takes to Playa Linda. It just temporarily puts out on a tripod or something like that, and then we have two NASA spaceflight cameras for launches from 39A or whatever. Um, all those sorts of things, we are taking that in, and we're plowing it right back in because we want to keep covering all these cool things for you. We want cool videos, we want cool photos. Everything across the board is because y'all keep showing up and because of the financial support. So, oh, you know the other thing. The other thing, if you want to. If you want to rep NASA spaceflight yourself, uh, you can actually visit our store. There's a lot of cool stuff in the store. I, of course, am wearing my fancy NASA spaceflight polo shirt on right now. That's like my host shirt. But uh, let's get a link to the store over there as well. Do we have anything new that we've put in the store lately? Yeah, Mark's always adding new stuff. <laughs> yeah, let me grab. Uh, hang on a second. I know for a fact there's a new thing that I haven't personally stoned on the stream and I will do that right quick. So here... <laughs> From tank watches to scrub watches, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Here is a link. This is the NASA Spade Flight store here. And you can see our latest release, the Eat, Sleep, Scrub, Repeat t-shirts. <laughs> this, of course, after that brutal week where it seemed just nothing could get off the ground. And we were all feeling very salty about what was <laughs> happening at the cave. And so instead of the normal Eat, Sleep, Launch repeat is the normal shirt. We have eat, sleep with a question mark. Sleep? <laughs> yeah. Because who gets sleep? And then scrub, our normal our launch picture with a scrub line, our little Ghostbuster. I don't know. What do you call that thing? Does it have a name? The Ghostbuster uh, A thing. no symbol. I don't know. <laughs> a no symbol. And then repeat. Uh, um, so and to that's... be very clear, two of those missions have still not launched. So the scrubs are ongoing for the record. <laughs> It's, it's, I was saying, I want, I'm, I have one of these shirts on the way to me, and I'm not going to wait. You don't wear it to a launch, right? That sounds right. dumb. You're not like, oh, I'm here in my, but I may be at a launch, and if the launch scrubs, I may have another shirt. I'll like open up the shirt and be like, I told you so, and have my <laughs> scrub. You don't want anybody to know you're wearing it, but you just sort of have it under your other clothes and have like some snap buttons or something. You just, <laughs> I told you it was going to scrub again. Um, anyways, if you want to support uh, us in another way, the store is a good way to do that. You can go and check out some of the merch prints from Mary and stuff like that. The Boca Chica sunrise prints that we got up there. These are actually like posters you can put on your wall. They have birds in them. Everybody likes birds. Uh, <laughs> we also have, this is from Julia out at the yep. Cape. That is that reflection shot of the Falcon 9. You see the reflection. Such a still day out there for that previous Starlink launch. And Julia capturing a fantastic photo. There's just all sorts of different stuff here. I mean, it's not really beach weather these days, but we still have those drone ship beach towels and uh, <laughs> flip flops on Mars. What <laughs> <laughs> wasn't my eye. Has anybody bought those, Chris? Has anybody bought them? I, I can confirm nobody has purchased those flip flops. <laughs> It's the NASA Spaceflight logo in, like, rover tracks on Mars. If you buy these, you will be the first person to have the flip-flops on. <laughs> I, think, I think the main problem is flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> I think the main That's problem cool. may be the $18 flip-flops. <laughs> I'm not sure these are $18 flip-flops. But you can be the only we person might... on the planet who wears these things. We might do a, prom might do a promotion where, 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 I don't know, we pay you to wear them. <laughs> you to wear them. It's like, please buy a scrub shirt and get a free pair of flip-flops or something. Anyways, y'all, lots of cool things over there on, there, on the uh, store. Just another cool way to support us. Oh, look, it's Fleet Cam again. Jeez. Um, <laughs> I will. We are going to continue on with the testing of Fleet Cam. If you're in the members Discord, we have been running some tests. So when the stream goes offline here, I'm going to pipe the Fleet Cam video into the members Discord. So if you're interested in getting access to stuff like that, YouTube membership is the way to do it. Again, we're able to do that stuff because of y'all's support, membership, super chats, all that sort of stuff. 
So uh, that's where Fleet Cam is going to be afterwards. Instructions on that should be somewhere. I know we have instructions on how to get connected. But uh, I think that is going to be the end of NASA Spaceflight Live. I've taken us 15 minutes over, so we've gotten a little bit of extra time there. But uh, I think that that is the end. As Oh, the other thing, speaking of memberships, right? As always, we want to give a thanks to our... Where'd our members go? Michael! <laughs> we've got what? more than that. Oh, we don't have any members <laughs> left. <laughs> What's Thanks wrong? Thanks for your buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna refresh it. Stand by. Refresh cash. Well, I mean, technically, face. it's a picture of Earth. All the members are on Earth, right? Yeah. Okay, we're good. <laughs> there There's go. our members. The top two tiers of the YouTube memberships: the launch directors and flight engineers. Chris and Thomas. I remember when we first started this, I would read out the names because we had like yeah, five. Yeah, we can't really do that anymore, can we? <laughs> yeah, we're way past that. But everybody who supports us at the top tier levels over here, we appreciate the support across the board thank you all so much for that and then i'm not gonna forget uh everyone's left i'm not gonna forget uh the twitch side either twitch thank you all so much for all the support again i know i've been doing a ton of stuff with nasa spaceflight i'm putting a lot of that over on the twitch channel as well thanks to nasa spaceflight for giving me permission to do that but uh i am able to do this stuff because of y'all so we're able to bring all this stuff because of what i learned over the last five six years streaming on twitch doing our virtual field trips running out to rocket launches i'm able to do that because y'all supported me in all that so i'm never going to forget about twitch thank y'all so much for getting us to this point because twitch carried twitch sort of carried me here as i learned how to do all this so that then we could spool it up and share it with everybody else via nasa so never forgetting twitch either but now it's the end of the show <laughs> Is that the end? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so again, Chris Bergen was the voice, the uh, the voice on the comms there. Chris, thank you so much for joining us for the end of the program there. My pleasure. All right. Chris is managing editor for NASA Spaceflight. Follow him on Twitter at NASA Spaceflight, like actually the prime NASA Spaceflight account. Uh, always fantastic to have you on the shows here. Thomas Burkhart on this side. Thomas, thank you for joining today. Thanks for having me, Doss, as always. If Thomas wasn't here, it would have just been the Doss and Fleet Cam show, and we would have literally just talked about <laughs> And Fleet Doss Cam. would not have complained for a second. Yep. Chat, yep. chat, would you have complained? Let's be honest. <laughs> would you have complained? Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Thomas Burkhart, editor, camera operator, live stream commentator, host extraordinaire, just all across the board. So many of us wear so many different hats, but Thomas, thank you so much for uh, keeping me honest here today. <laughs> we were also joined by Fleet Cam. Are taking our other uh, guests here. No, I'm kidding. I mean, it was actually here. And then last but not least, I'm uh, John Galloway of the NASA Space Flight. You're watching over on Twitch. You may know me as DOS. And we will be back. More daily vo videos from Boca Chica. Anything interesting going on, make sure you follow the channel here. Turn on the notifications. If it goes live, it's something you don't want to miss if you're a space fan. That's the important thing to drill into your head. If the channel goes live, it's probably something you're going to want to see. All right. So we're going to go ahead and shut it. Banana. You're awesome. Banana. Thank you as well. We're going to go ahead and shut down NASA space flight live this week, and we will see you nerds later. Pressure looks good. Tall or no? Yikes. You bet. Okay. We don't need any more of these.